What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. Listen, I'm gonna keep it an absolute stack with y'all. We probably won't be able to do our Firefly pulls tonight or any content tonight at all. Uh, unfortunately, another storm is coming to Houston and I already got the alert from my uh, internet service as well as power that we're probably gonna get our power knocked out. Um, not looking for sympathy points, by the way. It is what it is. We'll, we're gonna take care of ours, but I wanted y'all to know we're not going to be able to do any content probably who knows when either like this shit sometimes it gets ugly to the point where the power is out for a day for two days for three days i'm hoping uh it's not going to be that bad and the way it happens too is it just comes out of the blue like it happens in 30 to 45 minute window and then it's done but in that 30 to 45 minute minute window it's like uh it's like tasmanian devil it's like virgil you know what i mean <laughs> bros bros the storm he's the eye of the storm not getting off topic i wanted to at least give some kind of content to you guys in case the worst were to happen and it's something new that i want to do going forward as well it's going to be called uh meta predictions and generally when i do this topic it's going to be when a new patch or version of honkai star rail is coming out and they're introducing a plethora of characters two to three to four of them four star five star I'm going to do a meta prediction and it's going to be based off of how I think those new characters are going to impact the meta or pre-existing characters position and value in the current meta. I think this is something that's uh, not only good content, insightful content, but it's also something to come back to after they've released and see how much I was cooking or how off the mark I actually was. So with that being said, I want to talk to you guys about how I think Firefly is going to affect the meta as well as uh, Boot Hill once the Apocalyptic Shadow comes out, as well as Harmony MC and all the units that I think are just going to pop off with this new version coming in. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So starting off with Firefly, I think for the memory of chaos, once Firefly comes out, he absolutely should be right next to Acheron. Now, I think the one caveat of Firefly is right now she's gonna seem like the most broken character in the game because that's how they intend for you to see her. They want to set up the stage to where there's like, it appears that there's no weakness to Firefly's kit whatsoever. She's so broken. That's how they set it up. They put a bunch of new units in the game. They're all weak to fire. They all like synergize with the super break play style. Firefly is gonna seem absolutely insane and will be absolutely insane but the caveat here is what's going to happen down the line in the future when they put units in the game whose shields can't be broken they enter that e immunity toughness reduced state a state where you can't reduce their toughness that literally i'm not it like it kills firefly's value like it's going to throw it in the garbage as well as the harmony mc's value when is that going to happen who the hell knows but until then Firefly's value, I think I'm putting her, I can't believe I'm saying this, in front of Acheron. I think she's actually going to be even stronger than Acheron. Based off the numbers I've ran and the way I understand her kit when combined with the Harmony MC, she's going to be definitely right up here, bare minimum, if not in front of Acheron. Of course, keep in mind, Pride when does alphabetical order, so it doesn't matter. That's just me going above and beyond. Now, with that said, Harmony MC has to be T0 has to be t0 the the value i, I want to explain this to you if you take harmony mc out of the game firefly goes from t0 to like fucking t4 that's how much of a value the harmony mc is to firefly like I mean, her kit just doesn't function unless you have this character so with that thought process in mind bro has to bro, or he or she has to go in t0 they just have to brother like with that concept they just made one unit incredibly broken by the lonesome not to mention boot hill i think nobody and i do mean this i think he is unparalleled in terms of power level in apocalyptic shadow boot hill is going to be t0 in apocalyptic shadow and i don't think anyone should stand next to boot hill with that said, Harmony MC also works with Boot Hill and Apocalyptic Shadow. Bro's just a menace. You know what I mean? So I think Harmony MC should be T0. And that's all we're going to say about that. Now, the next person I want to talk to you about is my boy Gallagher. Yes, a four star abundance healer. I don't know what to tell you, but bro is meta. Bro is 100% meta. If you're looking for that fourth person on the Firefly team, it is going to be Gallagher. Bro has a multiplicative break effect increase that also affects super break and regular break. So like 
And not only that, he's a sustainer who can also deal damage, who does like it, bro, just pops off. I think he belongs in T0.5. Hot take, but that's just what it is. You're not going to use these other units over Gallagher on a Firefly team in terms of sustaining. You're just not. Uh, and again, you also are going to use him in, with Boot Hill and Apocalyptic Shadow as your sustainer because of the, the break effect increase he's given to Boot Hill. So, yeah, I'm, I'm be honest with you. I think Gallagher should actually be in T0.5, which is crazy because he's a four star abundance healer. But <laughs> bro is him. He might be 13, but them hands and them drinks is rated E for mature audiences. So next character I want to talk to you guys about is Topaz and Ratio. Topaz and Ratio are the dynamic duo that can almost hold a candle you know what i'll be honest maybe they can i don't think they can but they're going to be the closest pair to meeting and matching boot hills performance in apocalyptic shadow i think these two should be t0.5 they might even outperform my expectations and be just as optimal as a boot hill in apocalyptic shadow and if they outperform them, i'd be shocked because look here's the thing boot hill I know a lot of people didn't make a lot of content on him because this, at that time, Wuthering Waves just completely overtook the gotcha community and just everybody forgot about Boot Hill at the point in time. But I've been playing him in the shadows. The guide is coming out. I'm waiting on Apocalyptic Shadow just to really show you his value. Bro hits for like 400 to 500,000 damage. Single target. That's the most disgusting thing about it. See, these Destruction Path characters are a little bit like you know pump fakey i guess that's the word i'm looking for yeah they be pump faking with their numbers it's like oh a million damage but like to the adjacent allies they take up a lot of that million damage number right their single target damage isn't as high as it would be same thing with akron she can hit a whole field of five people and go over a million but like that's that's four other people getting hit the single target damage though boot hill can hit 400k three times like to one target it's not it's not adjacent it's just to a single target bro is a absolute menace the crazy thing is i have a free to play boot hill and I, i'm not even making that up my boot hill is, is using the free to play yangshing picture light cone it gives a speed boost as long as you don't take any damage and i'm hitting for 350 to 400 000 damage completely free to play so like apocalyptic shadow boot hill has to be T0 on his complete own. And then Topaz and Ratio, T0.5, potentially, nah, yeah, I'm just gonna keep it a buck. I just don't see them performing on his level. The dude is a menace. It's not just because his damage is crazy, it's also because the bleed effect. He's a bleed character. Physical characters are the most broken characters in the game for bleed dot, as I've stated many times in the past. So he's not just hitting for 500K, they're then taking bleed dot based off of how much HP they have. Bosses have absurd amounts of HP, so they're like capping out the bleed proc. He builds break effect. So he's T0 and they're T0.5. I think I made my point pretty clear there. And now y'all knew this was coming. Ron May. Yes, Ron May is at the focal point of these Super Break teams as well as the Harmony MC, whereas these two aren't needed at all. And guess what meta's coming in? Super Break meta. We've, we've, we've been telling y'all for a very long time, all right? Some of these idiots think I am like a Ron May enjoyer like who just like, overhype sir no you're just a moron i'm not overhyping ron may i'm telling you the undeniable fucking truth that the bitch is just broken she's just that broken until somebody else comes along and proves it otherwise or they put indirect buffs in the game that bring her down and bring the others up i'm gonna keep telling you this bitch is broken she belongs in t0 and these two belong down here as i've stated many times before her value is just a cut above the rest and now that super break is here it's doubly true doubly so so ron may should go right back up here to t0 for memory of chaos and even for apocalyptic shadow because you're going to be using her on uh boot hill teams you're going to put ron may in there she's just incredibly cracked with them so yeah that's what i have to say about that now in terms of pure fiction this is me getting into the future a little bit pure fiction i think once jade comes out she's gonna be better than herta which is wild, right? Because Herta's just been running the game in pure fiction. I think Jade is absolutely going to be T0 even better than Herta. And I think she's going to take Blade and shoot his ass way up to T0.5 in pure fiction. And then in Memory of Chaos, I think she's going to take him from T2 and shoot him up to T1. I think their synergy is going to be absolutely insane. It's going to be equivalent. No, not equivalent. It's going to be similar to Black Swan and Kafka, except it's for follow-up and just like masochist health draining 
AOE ass damage. This is going to be a little goofy. So I think she's going to bring his value up, maybe a couple of other characters, but I'm confident that Blade 100% is going up in value uh, for sure. Other than that, maybe there's other characters that are going to change, but those were the most important characters to highlight in terms of how their value is going to either improve or just outright just take over once 2.3 comes out and both patch patches have gone by. Again, I wanna do these meta predictions going forward with future characters. I think it's a good topic to discuss. It creates good flow of conversation. And uh, yeah, it's just an overall and I think entertaining content to make prior to the release of these characters. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope I brought you guys some value and uh, hopefully this damn storm ain't gonna be too bad. We'll see what happens, but we'll try to get this video out. And yeah, to be determined. Peace.